For this episode of Darth's Train Shop, we've got a brass Sunset Models GP7 made by Sam Hongsa. Now this was advertised as being non-running and having just a little bit of body damage. So let's get right to it and see if we can figure out how to fix this thing and get it working again. So just looking over the model, the only actual damage I see would be the uh, sunshade here. Looks like it got bent at some point. And then there are a few um, probably burn marks around the uh, coating where there may have been some solder repairs, maybe some from some weak joints in the body. So yeah, this one might not be the best looking to leave as brass, so it would be a good candidate for a full paint job. The rest of it looks really good. All the parts are there and in good shape. So I'll just uh, go ahead and get the body off of here. We'll see how things look inside. Let's see how this one's held on. Usually there's some screws around that you can find. Okay, there's one. These are in some kind of awkward locations. But I think I can get to them with a thin flat blade screwdriver. So I'll just uh, try this one here. That's a little difficult to reach. I think what I'll do instead is just disassemble the trucks first, take out the wheels, and then maybe I can get to it. Looks like there's some screws missing from the trucks too. There, now I'm getting it. Oh. Oh, no wonder why it doesn't run. <laughs> Someone decided it would be a good idea to just take out the gears. wonder if they were just trying to make it into a dummy unit or if there was a bad gear in there or what. But, uh, yeah, I guess I've got a little more rebuilding to do on here than just uh, maybe doing some greasing and fixing the gears. <laughs> I'll just have to look through my parts supply and see what I've got. But that does at least let me get to the screws here. So there's that loosened. I'll just do the same for the other end, which I'm sure is also missing its worm shaft. It looks like those tower gears are plastic, so maybe this one at some point had a split tower gear on each of those worm shafts, I don't know. If it did, then that would explain its conversion into a dummy unit. Lift that off. Huh, and the universals have also been removed. Very nice. Looks like a good quality motor, though. I'm guessing it's a Sagami, or something similar anyway. I can't see the tag, so I'll just check on that later. Wiring was never removed, though, which is kind of odd. That means that, that motor would have just been coasting along while whatever other engine pulled this along the track. Someone had some very strange ideas on how to take care of this model. Yeah, well, let's uh, just get the trucks off of there the rest of the way then. So this is assembled similar to a hobby town truck having the uh, long screws going through the gear tower and down into the main truck. Now these gears look perfectly fine. Turn nice and smoothly too. But they are also helically cut, so that means replacing those may be a little more difficult. I'll have to figure out what I'm going to do there. So that gear was definitely not tight to its shaft. Hmm. This must be some of Sam Hongs' early work then. So I've usually known them to put together stuff that holds together a little bit better than that.
I don't think there's any need to take the motor out, so I'm just going to leave that in there. But now the chassis is disassembled, so I guess I'll just go through things and see what I can do to make this work. Well, after checking around Northwest Short Lines catalog and eBay and some other places, I just couldn't find the parts that I need to get this fixed. So what I'm going to do instead is modify the chassis to use these Kato made trucks. And that will probably have this diesel running better than it ever has anyway. So this will be a good upgrade, I think. So after looking over the chassis and the truck design, I think I can get this to work. These Kato trucks um, hold the chassis just a little bit higher than the original Sam Hogsa trucks with their plastic bolsters did. So I think I'm going to have to remove some of the brass from here, but I also have to extend the frame a little bit longer since the hinge point is at a different spot than on the original trucks, which swiveled pretty much over the inner axle there, where this one is closer to the center. So let's see, I don't think I'll have to remove too much material though. Pretty much just uh, maybe up to about these, well, not quite up to those two screw holes there, but getting close anyway. I think now would be a good time to remove the motor and fuel tank from there. So that way they're not in the way while I'm trying to do the rest of the work on here. Don't want them to get damaged. So that's a couple screws at each end for the fuel tank. Comes off just like that. Now I can get to the two screws that hold the motor mount on. And in order to get things properly aligned, I think I'm also going to have to do some modification to the um, middle of the chassis here so that I can lower the motor. Okay, so I've got the locations marked where I need to do the cutting. So that actually leaves a lot more brass behind than I thought, so that's good. So I'll just uh, use the cutting wheel here. I've already got my goggles on, so always want to wear goggles when you're using a tool like this. So I'll just line that up with where I marked. And get to cutting. That ringing noise it makes is almost painful. All right, so now I'm just going to break that off. Right where that line is. Just kind of weaken that a little. Oops, don't want to bend that. There, just weaken that spot a little by bending a little at a time on each side until eventually it just snaps off. Then I can file that smooth. And now that's ready for me to get to work on actually installing the truck. And it looks like I've got enough clearance to swivel now. And that should be at just the right height. All right, I've got the two new pieces cut out. So this one goes on the front, and then this one goes on the back. I made the cuts to just uh, go around the different clearances that they need so they won't get in the way once they're soldered in place. Now, before I can actually solder that, I need to just clean up the metal a bit. Some old tape, adhesive, and tarnish left behind, so that's definitely going to get in the way of good adhesion from the solder. Okay, that should do it. Now, this will go right here. And one last check to make sure I'm getting that in the right spot. This needs to go right about here. So this piece, right over here. Now just a bit of liquid flux to help with the soldering. Using the large tip to make sure that it heats up quickly. That also helps things to flow more smoothly on large parts. Just 
So the top piece is heated enough to melt the solder, but the bottom plate below it is still warming up, so it's not flowing super well yet, but once the temperatures are evened out, that should go in nice and smooth and have a good strong bond. Okay. So I'll give that a little bit of time to cool off, then I'll clean it up and get things finished for the truck to fit on there. All right, after a little more work to just get some clearance in there and get the hole to the right size, the truck is now fitting right where it needs to be. You can swivel. And I also checked tight against one of the originals at the other end, and it looks like it's right where it needs to be. So now I just have to um, add a little bit up here so that the uh, worm and truck clip can also hold that in place the way that it needs to. And this leftover square universal stock from Hobby Town ended up being just the right size. So now put that on there, snap the cover in place. And that stays on, no problem at all. All right, so both trucks are now on. It's sitting nice and flat. So now I just need to get the motor in place, but as you can see, it's not even close to being in line with the two truck drive shafts. So I think if I just uh, flip it over like this and mount it directly to the brass floor, that might work well enough because that gets it a lot closer to being in line with the trucks. So I'm going to see what I can do with that first. And if it's not good enough, then I'll have to cut into the floor a little and lower the motor more than that. But I might just be able to put it on the floor and that'll be enough. That's got four screws holding it in, so they definitely didn't want it going anywhere. Okay, take that out. Well, it might not be a Sagami. Maybe it is. I don't know. No brand marking. Take out this piece of electrical tape, which is just slimy anyway and kind of gross. Wipe some of that goop off of there. So I only see the one hole here. Is that the screw hole? Mm, it might be, but I'm not going to risk it. I think it'll work out all right just being mounted directly to the chassis. So since I can't really screw it in place like this without making a new bracket, I think what I'm going to do instead is use some of this uh, neoprene foam. I like using this for motor mounting. It's um, soft, kind of spongy, but at the same time it has good density to it. So it does a really good job of holding the motor in place, but it also reduces vibration by a lot. I'll just take that down to two thin strips. That'll be enough. One other thing I found about this foam is that it has really, really good adhesion to super glue. So I'll just put a bead along there. Careful not to touch it with my skin because it'll stick instantly. Got to make sure that holds the motor perfectly centered. Otherwise it won't fit right with the body. That's looking pretty good. Okay, that's holding the motor. It is just ever so slightly suspended above the brass, so that'll help with vibration dampening, make it run that much quieter. So now I just need to attach some universals and see how this runs. Okay, the universals are in place. They seem to be working well, so I went ahead and wired things up. And I just came up with this simple wiring system that's taped in place, so it can be easily removed at any time to install DCC or any other board. And as for the running quality, everything seems to be really good. Runs along nice and smooth. 
pretty quiet. No problems with electrical pickup either. So these new trucks upgrade it from four wheel pickup to eight wheel. So it'll be a lot more reliable running around the track. So I'll just uh, test this around the layout with the body in place, make sure everything is working the way it needs to, and then get on to doing the um, repairs to the body. All right, so there it is on the layout, and I put it onto the inner 18 inch radius loop just to make sure that it will have no clearance issues. It takes off nice and smooth. Get them nice and quiet. No problem so far. Put that up to full speed. Yeah, that's turned out to be a real nice runner. Now for fixing the bodywork, I think I'll start with this sunshade here. I'll just uh, carefully bend that around with these uh, smooth jawed pliers. Don't want to cause any markings in there, or at least want to avoid that as much as possible. Serrated jaw pliers would not be a good idea for this kind of work. It's already looking a little better. Okay, that looks straight now. So I'll just uh, bend this back down. It kind of feels like it doesn't have a very strong hold from the solder, so I can move that around really easily. Okay, well, I think that was the only bent part. But as I've looked around it while doing the other work on here, I also found there were some other little issues, like these uh, handrail stanchions. Quite a few of them are loose and even pop out of their holes. So I'll have to do some re-soldering to get them in place, but I think that'll be easy to do. There's already solder back there, so I just need to heat things up with a bit of flux, maybe a little bit of tinning, and that should take care of it. Now I can get that tip in there. I'll see if that solder can stick through the coating, which I think it can since those were soldered together before. See if that did anything. Yeah, still loose. Okay, so it seems like to really get that soldered in place, I would have to remove the coating from the body first. So instead of that, I think I'll just uh, clean that up with some alcohol on a Q-tip. Get out the excess flux. And then I'll just put a drop of super glue in there. Work that in a little bit and let that set. That'll do fine. While waiting for that to cool off enough to handle, I made myself a quick foam cradle to hold this in place. All right, so now in order to get these handrails soldered back on, I need to just put a little spot of flux here I did check the end of this stanchion and there is still some solder on there, so it looks like the joint was just weak. So in that case, all I should have to do is heat it up just with a little extra solder, reflow things. So I'll just hold that there until it melts back together. It seems to be holding in place nice and strong. So I'll just look through it for any other loose stanchions and fix those, and I think that's all the body work this is going to need. 
Even with the soldering iron, I was still having some trouble getting some of these to stick, so instead I'm trying this butane lighter, and so far it seems to be doing the trick. If I can just get it going. Okay, so I was right earlier about these being scorching from reheating the solder joints, because the same kind of thing happened when I repaired some of these stanchions here. So this is definitely going to be one model that's best to paint over or just strip down and recoat. But now all the body repairs are done. The stanchions are holding in place where they need to be. And I'd originally thought that these uh, windscreens were bent, but it turns out that they are just hinged. So you can turn them to whatever direction you want. So now I just need to figure out getting the body back onto the chassis because of that weird screw placement. These two up here, I can do just fine because I can turn the truck. For these other two, well, I might have to pop off these side frames so that I can get some access there and then I can just snap those back on. All right, so as I suspected, I did have to take the side frames off of the rear truck so that I could get to those two screws. So that's just done by first popping off the bottom cover. It's uh, four little latches around the edges you can see. And then once that's done, you can pop off each end of the side frames to get them to come off. And then these electrical pickups just fit back over the axles. It's a little tedious to get everything in place. There, but once it's on there, just put the side frame back on. And do the same for the other side. And then snap the cover back on. And there's a little, um, just a little spot in there to fit around this gear in front of the second axle. Wanna make sure to line those up to make sure that it runs smoothly. And there it is, all ready to go. And this is now all finished, running smooth as can be. So this will be going up on eBay at the same time that this video is published. You can find the link down in the description. And that will be available until Friday this week. And I'm also gonna have a separate listing for the additional parts, like the um, trucks with their leftover gears and a few other screws so if you want to get those too you can or you can just leave them for someone else who might want parts but that will be all for this video and whoever gets this model i hope it runs well for you for a long time